Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about variables. Variables is a fundamental concept in programming languages in general, not just Python. So it's critical for you to understand what variables are, how to use them, and when to use them. So let's dive in. So before we jump into talking about variables, let's remember the Hello World program that we wrote previously. It was a very simple Python program. It was print. We used the print statement, and we said print, and then Hello World between double quotes. And the reason why we used double quotes is because we wanted to indicate to Python that this text is a string, treated as a string. I know we haven't talked about strings yet, I'm going to talk about strings and other data types in great depth in the future. But for now, what I want you to understand is if you say print and you put any text within double quotes, Python is just going to print this text on the screen as is. So now if we want to incorporate variables in this code, it will look something like this. We can say message is equal to hello world. And then we print message. Now let's pause a little bit and try to think of what actually happened here. The first line here where we said message is equal to hello world, what's happening here, this statement in Python is called an assignment statement, an assignment statement. The reason why it's called an assignment statement is you are assigning a value to a name, okay? You're assigning a value, some value to a name. In this particular case, we're assigning the value hello world, the text or the string hello world. We're assigning this value to something called message. It's a name. Message, in this case, is our variable. This is what a variable is. It's just a name that you use to refer to some value. In this case, this value is hello world. Okay. So again, let's repeat that. You have an assignment statement to the left of your assignment operator, which is the equal sign. To the left of it is the variable name, and to the right of it is the value that you want to store in this variable name. So this is how I want you to think about this. A variable has a name, and it also has a value that is stored in this variable. Okay, now in the line after that, when we say print message, what Python is going to do is it going to come across this name message and then it will see what value this variable message is referring to. This value is hello world, so Python is going to print hello world. So if we run our program, we can see that the value hello world is printed on the screen. Let's try to visualize that. To visualize how variables work, you can always think of the value as some data that is stored in the memory. And then the variable name message will be pointing to this value. Okay, so when you come across message is equal to hello world, you have message as a name. You can think of it as just as a name that is pointing to the value hello world in the memory. Now, what if in addition to that, we say message to is equal to hello after nerd? and then we print message to. Of course, if we run this program, we can see that Python prints hello world first, and then after that, it prints hello after nerd. If we wanna see how this works under the hood, it's pretty simple. Similarly, we're gonna have another variable name, message to, which is pointing to a new value in the memory that is hello after nerd. So this is how things will look like in the memory after we have these two assignment statements. Now, what if we, instead of saying message to, we say message is equal to hello after nerd, and then we print message. What do you think is going to happen here? So because Python goes through these lines sequentially, the first line, Python is going to assign the value hello world to the variable message. And then you're gonna print message, you're gonna print hello world on the screen. But then in the third line, there will be a new assignment. There is a new value that is now assigned to the variable name message. So the older value will not be used anymore. Throughout your program, from this point, message 
will be referring to hello afternoon. And that's why when we try to print message after this new assignment, what we see on the screen is hello after nerd is being used. And throughout your program after this point, it's only the newest value that you assign to a variable that is going to be used. This is very important to understand. Okay, now let's try another thing. What if we, instead of saying print message, we say print and then message between double quotes. What is going to happen here? Well, here's the thing. Even though we have a variable that is called message, when Python comes to this point where you're asking Python to print message on the screen, but message is enclosed by double quotes, Python is not going to treat this as a variable name. It's not gonna see this as a variable. It's gonna see it as a text. You're basically telling Python, print this exact text on the screen. You're telling Python print this string on the screen. So Python is going to print it as is because Python is not going to look for the value that corresponds to this variable. So what's important here to understand is if you want to use a variable, do not enclose this variable by double quotes. Okay, because if you do that, you're basically treating this as a value, not a variable. So variables are not enclosed by double quotes. Another thing that I wanted to mention here is if you try to access a variable that doesn't even exist, let's say we want to print a message three, Python is going to complain. It's going to tell you, hey, like the name message three is not defined. There's no variable that is defined in your program that is called message three. Okay, so you can't really use variables that you haven't defined before which is very reasonable, very logical, but I wanted you to see what type of error you're getting if you try to access a variable that doesn't exist. One more thing that is important here is the variable naming rules. When you create variables, there are some rules that you actually need to follow to make sure that your variable names are correct and legitimate. Some of these rules are variable names should only have letters, numbers, and underscores, okay? Letters, the letters of the alphabet, could be lowercase or uppercase, numbers, and underscores. So for example, if you wanna do something like this, if you say um, my, and then at variable is equal to hi, you're gonna get an error. Uh, if you wanna say my, and then dash variable is equal to hi, you're also going to get an error because at and dash are special characters that are not part of letters, numbers, or underscores. Okay, but if you say my underscore variable is equal to high, this will work fine because this follows the variable naming rules that we talked about. Another thing is you can't you can't use spaces in your variable names as well. So if you say my and then dash, oh sorry, my and then space and then variable is equal to high, you are also going to get a syntax error. So this is the first rule, okay? Only letters, numbers, and underscores. The second rule is you cannot start a variable name with a number. So even though a number can exist in your variable characters, it cannot start the variable. So for example, if you say one underscore variable, is equal to high, this is going to return an error. And the reason why it's returning an error is because you're starting your variable name with a number. So you can use numbers in your variable names, but you cannot start the variable name with a number. So you can say variable uh, underscore one is equal to high. Python is not going to complain about that. But one underscore variable is something that is not allowed. Another best practice, this is not really a rule, but it's a best practice if you want to write cleaner, better code. Your variable names should be kind of short and descriptive of what they are referring to. So if you look at the example that we gave, we said message is equal to hello world. You're basically referring to a message that you want to print on the screen. So it kind of makes sense. So throughout your program, when you come across the variable name message, 
you kind of know what this variable is referring to. But if I say, for example, x is equal to hello world, and I'm using x throughout my program, I'm using the variable x throughout my program. If someone else, especially if this is a large program, if someone else is reading my code and comes across the variable x, they don't have any idea what this x refers to. So your variable names should be descriptive of what they are referring to. This is very important. And this is not just for Python. This is for any code that you write in any other programming language, OK? So make sure your variable names are not super long, but at the same time, they have to be descriptive of what they're referring to. OK, one final thing that is worth mentioning here is even though so far we've been only talking about data that is of string type, basically text like hello world and hello after nerd, all of these were, were strings, were just a sequence of characters that represents text. This is not the only data type in Python. There are other data types as well. For example, we can say age is equal to 25. Age, like we said, this is also an assignment statement. Age is the variable name, and it is referring to some value, but now this value is what we call an integer value, and the value of it is 25, okay? We can also say pi is equal to 3.14. So pi, in this case, is a variable. It's the name of a variable, but it is referring to also a number, but this time this number is what we call a floating point number. There's also another data type in Python that we call Boolean types. Boolean types can be true or false. So they only have one of these two values, true or false. So for example, I can say is underscore valid is equal to true. Is underscore valid is the variable name, and it is referring to a Boolean type true. OK, there are also lists. For example, I can say grocery underscore list, which is going to be the variable name. And I can assign this to the list apples, bananas, and chicken. So the point I'm trying to make here is variables can be used to point to any data type. I am very aware that we haven't talked about these data types, and it's not the goal of this lesson to talk about these data types for now. The goal of this lesson is to talk about variables. So I just want you to know that variables can refer to any data type. And in the coming videos, we are going to talk about each of these data types in great depth. So think of this as a little heads up of what's coming next in this series of videos. I hope this lesson was useful for you. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.